Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago as usual. And a lot of people told me about a TPO that was going down in Judge Manning's room. Uh, actually, there were several. They were all good, but but I think the last one was the best. So I, th I thought I'd hop on it and do that as happy hour today. So let's get do to it, shall we? to get like a little bit off the debt just that's like like my mom didn't ask me to do that goal I just said right away to her, I said that's my goal I'm gonna make and I wanted to do it before I had this meeting this is actually kind of sweet it didn't work out like that but still I won't you're, you're I gonna still need that am like to on get that the goal, other one. and I'm still gonna <laughs> um complete it so what do you think uh this horse border sounds like she's trying um, I think that my daughter um, took our last court hearing very seriously. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next day she jumped into action and went up there and got her job back, which is no small feat. So I think that she's done everything that she can do. I mean, my only remaining question would be, um, yeah, you you know, we have a plan for the first 100, but we have, a um, you know, 753. So what's your plan? I mean, out of every paycheck, you should be. Out of every paycheck, I'm going to give first mm -hmm. I'm going to do the math. See, like my goal is to get you a hundred dollars, first of all. And then second of all, every paycheck I get, I need to um, budget it out. So I to leave some for you, leave some for paying the checks, uh, paying the bills I have, have mm -hmm. like enough for everyone. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but I think the first thing, remember, I think I ought to go to mom because she's paying for everything. So I mean, right, I'm but I still have a phone bill and stuff I got to pay. Yeah, we talked about that in Hulu, but I bet you can pay your mom 50 bucks at least. Yeah. I think $50 is a paycheck. Uh, yeah. Pay, right? You know, if you got a little more, because you want to pay it off soon, like some people do on their cars, like I did, oh. you can give her a little more. That sounds you, like you're, you're, you're making good strides. I'm proud of you. Thanks. You know, you guys getting along better? I mean, it's like... A mother daughter relationship. We relationship. We have our know. ups, we have our downs. And <laughs> I will admit, and I'm not proud of it, but I've been like a, a little yelly at her lately because I've been on so much like stress because we've been doing we've been I, I have an issue with blood draw. So we've been talking about that. And I've been a little snappy at everyone for it. And because I'm absolutely downright terrified mm -hmm. of it. So, like, I even said to my therapist, I said, you guys have to knock me out with the drug to get me to get my blood drawn. That's how serious it is. It's kind of weird. Knock you out with the blood draw, then they're sticking you with a needle. You don't like needles. Yeah, it's just, I know, but it's weird because I can take, like, a She's tattoo just a kid. any day. Like, a tattoo, wherever my tattoo is. Right. I can take one any day, but, like, a blood draw is, like, traumatizing for me. I don't know how to, like. It's yeah. really funny because my, my teacher, like, Alina, you have a tattoo. How can you not get your blood drawn? That's worse than a blood draw because you're getting stabbed so many times. And I'm like, I honestly don't know how to answer that question. Right. So, you know uh, Judge Manning, Your Honor, I think that Alina has gotten a taste of the judicial system. And uh, I think that she understands. Ms. Rutledge. Ms. Rutledge just raised her up. I gave her a taste of the judicial system. Say what now? I said that was for uh, Miss Rutledge, who's a lawyer on here. She's been in front of me, so I think she has an idea what kind of taste she got of the judicial system. Yeah, well, you know, so um, I think that she takes this stealing idea very seriously now. I already told the court last time what would happen if she ever stole from me again. So I think that we're kind of good for now, Judge Manning. Did she watch? Did she watch court at night for the people that were trying to get bond? No, but I've wa I've been watching a lot of um, detective videos, honestly, and court videos, just not that one. And a lot of talk you with Mike. You didn't want to see me again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad, and I hope, I'm glad that, that what we talked about helped you, because like I said, I'd give anything in the world to see my mom again just for a minute. So you got to, you know, you don't have but one mama, you got to be sweet to her. Mm -hmm. Don't steal from her, you know, don't do all that. And work with you, you know, get up, get everything you need to do. If you need it, talk to your therapist, find out how to address stuff. You know, as long as you talk to your mom, I think she's there to help, even though at your age, you probably think she's not, but she is. 
So I was wondering if it's um, a good time to discuss dismissing the TPO. Okay. And what do you, do you can like I actually to tell you about that real quick? Yes, ma'am. So, so the police came right, right after. No, no I'm this, gonna is, this is, we don't need this, honey. No, I know, I know the facts that happened. I know that. She knows what happened. You honey, do? Please. Okay, because there's a lot of people waiting to talk to Judge Mom. I don't, we don't need to Mom, but it is kind of oh, serious because I'm not sweet. technically supposed to be in this house right now. Judge Manny yeah. knows that you're I get it. I understand. I, it's I understand okay. Everything. Go ahead. What else? What are you going to say about me dismissing? No, I was just saying, I, I would like to um, discuss with you whether or not, I mean, I kind of feel that this is a good time to dismiss the TPO. Okay. Well, that means, Elena, that you did so good, she wants to dismiss it. That's good. You know, I mean, yes. I know Rutledge likes to make money, but you'd have to hire Miss Rutledge for something like that. Miss Rutledge, what would you charge somebody to represent them for um, theft? Just a basic theft charge. Misdemeanor theft. Well, misdemeanor. Five thousand. Okay, that's just a plea amount. And yes. What about, what about if you had to take it to trial? Mm -hmm. Um, if we were, if she wanted. Take it to trial, it would be somewhere, you know, you're getting close to almost ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So it's kind of like that. That's why I tell people who get DUIs, you know, that fifty dollar lift ride is a lot cheaper than a DUI, which is gonna cost you 10 grand easy. So I'm proud of you. And anytime you don't want to reach back out and tell me how you're doing, I want to hear because I mean it sounds like just in this little bit of time you've made fantastic. Right, a lot better than where you were last time. Yeah. Well, I think that, um, as Elena said, she has been under a lot of stress. You know, I had to go the real world route, not just like talk therapy, but bring her into the real world. So, right. you know, I think that uh, it's, it's been a little bit of a wake up call. Sweet mom. I'm going to keep an eye on you, Elena. So I want you to, uh, you know, you and your mom can email us. Y'all got this and let us know how you're doing. I'll probably email you the first check I make to her. <laughs> what would we do? Email Amber? Yeah, she you would, can email Amber. Let me know how you're doing. She would forward it to you? Okay. Uh-huh. Now, does this TPO stay on her record? I was told by the front office that it, okay. it would be... We're good. We're, we're taking care of everything. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, do I need to do any paperwork or we're done? No, ma'am. Just place your email in the chat and we'll email you unless we already have it. We'll email you a copy of the dismissal. Thank you. This couldn't have, we couldn't have had a better judge, really. Many blessings. Thank you so much. Take thank care. you so much. Keep me up to date on how you're doing, okay? I will. Yes. Right, thank you. Yes, Your Honor. Thank okay. you. All right. So, uh, Mr. Brown and Ms. Brown, where is Ms. Brown? Get I'm present, Mr. Brown. Yeah, I'm on the phone. All right. Both of y'all and Ms. Brown, have you? Sir, have you had an opportunity to speak with uh, Ms. Rutledge, or would you like one? Um, I spoke with Ms. Rutledge, and if she'd like to speak to me about anything else, I'm more than open. She's very kind. Well, Ms. Rutledge, do you think it'll help, or should we just go ahead with the hearing? Well, <clears throat> I, based on my conversation with him, um, you know, I, I think he needs, like, I was telling him there's currently a criminal case where my client has a bond where she cannot go to his home, she cannot contact him and cannot go to the home without police escort. His main thing is, is he does not want um, Donna Brown around him. And I explained to him, my client has been to jail. She understands that she cannot contact him. She cannot show up at his house without the police. And that's just to get her things this one time. They are going through a divorce in New Jersey. <clears throat> and I was just explaining to him, uh, and I don't know if he needs, you know, this civil temporary protection order is not um, going to make any, it's not going to make a, a, any more reason why she would be able to come over this uh, criminal case. So I, I don't know if he quite understands that. And I'm not sure you know, she what remedy he that. wants, except for her to stay away. Right, yeah, and I, I told him that she has to do. And you told him, Ms. Rutledge, what happens if she violates that bond condition? She goes to jail. He calls I haven't seen this she yet. She goes to jail. So she understands that. 
she this she's never had any contact with the criminal justice system she spent three days in jail it was very traumatizing for her she knows that she does not need to contact him go you know she um has an attorney in new jersey they are resolving you know the divorce in new jersey she understands that she you know they're moving forward um with the divorce so she knows she cannot contact him and i just wanted him to understand that he just said he felt like he was failed by the system and i said well there is a bond in place and i i don't know what remedy he wants um at with the temp with this temporary protection order. would like to point out Rutledge, did you explain to him that, that edward brown if she violates a bond down with the law type with my lifestyle <laughs> bond be revoked she could also then be charged with aggravated stalking I didn't tell him about the aggravated stalking. Yeah. I have, you know, talked to my client. She understands the seriousness yes, of it. So she, so she violates it, Mr. Brown. I'm not telling you either way. But Stay strong, if brother. If she violates this, I mean, most people bring back for contempt and, and things like that. But she's in a much, and I'm not telling you either way, but right now she's in a position where one, like Ms. Rutten said, they're going to revoke her bond if she violates it. And then the prosecutor has a choice whether or not they want to charge her with um, aggravated stalking. So um, they could charge her with aggravated stalking. And that carries up to 10 years. Yeah, I haven't seen this yet. So if she violates her bond <laughs> condition, it's really going down a rabbit hole full of trouble. I'm, I'm, I'm not pretty sure Ms. Brown would. I'm not endorsing Mr. Brown. I'm so, just saying. I mean, I know that you said something like you, you think that the system or the county had failed you. So what other he knows how I mean, to stay she's comfortable. She's got a whole bunch more pressure on her right now, not to bond, not to break that um, bond condition. So what else is it that you're you're asking for? Are you talking to me, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, I just want to um I want to prolong that TPO as long as I can for for the best interest, not just only of me, of her as well. I, I, I don't want any problems, anything and any belongings that she has. I'm more than willing to have to give it to her when police escort. Because again, okay, I don't Okay, so hold on. Her bond conditions are more restraining than a TPO. She's got it. She basically has a TPO to the criminal system. Yes. You have one of those. Yes. Okay. Her. Do you not feel that that's enough? Because this is like um, so you're sitting on bond conditions, suspenders, which unfortunately some people do. Okay, um, maybe uh, a little, Honor, a I, I just want the best for me to um for the system don't fail me again. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, right now, if she violates our bond conditions, she gets rearrested and she can get charged with. <laughs> Aggravated stop. I haven't seen it, but I. So what? Are you, um, I'm just asking kindly. What are you asking me? I mean, <clears throat> do you know what I talk about when somebody wears a uh, a belt and suspenders? All right, yes, fair enough. Okay, why do you feel that you would need belt and suspenders to hold their pants up, cover their butt? <laughs> why do they need to wear them both at the same time? They're both made for the same thing. You're not supposed Correct. to help if you have them suspended. Jeez. Why do you want two Why are we discussing pants? analogies? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I can barely hear you, but go ahead, Yana. All right. I mean, you got it's, it's like wearing two pair of pants at the same time. Right now, it's there's more consequences. If she violates her bar condition, she'd get charged with that assault. Number two, they if she violated TPO, you make a report, and it depends. I can't even tell you. Some people get arrested for violating them, some do not. Most of the time, people come back here and file a contempt, and then I make the decision what to do. But I'm not going to charge her criminal. It's only going to be some sort of civil. In a criminal case, she would get charged criminally for anything she does, which would be a heavier price to pay for violating well uh, yeah well I, I definitely want her to be charged criminal if she does something to me okay well i can't do that only <laughs> the bond conditions can do that so are you fine with just being her bond condition and mr brown you're free that if she 
changes her, her bond conditions get changed, which I don't think that they will, and you can come back and reapply. Oh, God. Oh. Wait, do they you know both I mean, have conditions? could say that she would accept service to make it easier for you. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know. I will, and, you know, in Fulton County, <clears throat> you know, um, I have a case from May of last year and nothing has happened on it yet. So her bond will be in place, you know. Um, is you is know, it a misdemeanor or a felony? Wow. Mm. Well, no, this one is a felony, but I mean, it's just such a slow process. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's a misdemeanor oh, now? Well, well, well what happened, May? What, Hold on, Mr. Brown. Hold on. I'm sorry. I, I mean, they've got, what, a year to accuse it? Right. Yes. So she, you know, she will have this bond and, you know, um, I, 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 I her, her bond conditions could last longer because it could take another year to get it to trial. I think it might exactly. be time. So I haven't started. Uh, you know, and if it makes him, I will accept service. You know, if he, if the, um, you know, uh, but I, I, I just think that um, this is a divorce and there's criminal charges pending. So. I'm I'm going for one right now. I don't know. So, um, Mr. Brown. Yes, um, I want to ask. Uh, uh, I heard uh, Miss Rutledge says something happened last May. What happened last so May? she's talking about another client of hers. She's not talking oh, about. I, I, oh, that's what I'm saying. I I thought she was speaking about me. No, yeah. no, she's talking about another case. That something happened last May. They have bond conditions, <clears> and they have it, and those bond conditions are still there. The bond conditions will stay unless they're they're changed, but. Her bond conditions will stay on, but her probably will probably get the CPO will last. How about this, Mr. Brown? I'll put you in a breakout room with Ms. Rutledge and see if you two can, can talk about it and get a little bit better understanding from her. All right. Thank you, Thank you Yana. This is there you just... go. I'll send you that breakout room too. Okay, I got uh, um, this other case here. Final case of the day. So I got Mr. Griff and Mr. Smith. All right, if y'all both raise your right hands. Mr. Smith. <laughs> All right, do y'all swear or affirm testimony about to give is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Don't, don't come up here. Uh, yes, the truth. Okay, place your name. Place your name, Ms. McGriff. She said yes. All right, so here's what I want you to do, Ms. McGriff. Unless, unless, Unless it's all one action versus a fight happened and then different things started happening after that, start with the most recent event that you did that you've complained about. Like, here's why I came to get a TPO and kind of work backwards about any other stalking. And if you're going to be specific for me, please, like, he called me 382 times in December. He called me in January this many times. I told him to stop calling, things like that. So if you're going to say he harassed me, you got to tell me, like, what did he do? Because he kept texting me, and if he threatened you, you have to tell me what I threatened. You. Okay, Ms. McGriff? Um, yeah, well, it's been an on and off situation. Um, it started November the 7th, um, and I was outside with my dog. Um, I was over 20 feet away from, from my residence, which is directly next door to Mr. Smith. Um, at first, uh, his girlfriend, Ms. Alexander, uh, made some threats about popping my dog. Um, I was talking on the phone. I ended that conversation. Um, it's on surveillance from the apartment surveillance and from my surveillance where Mr. Smith then came out of the house, um, walked towards myself and my dog, which was on, a, he was on a leash. We were again over 20 feet away from him. Um, he approached me. You can see the gun on his waist. I don't know what he was, he was trying to come shoot me or what. Um, there was, uh, we had words. He then motioned and said, well, I'm going to shoot you. And he used these vulgar, um, Lesbian terminology. Um, turn. <laughs> Beth, I'm going to mute you because somebody sitting beside you and talking to you, so they're not going to be able to testify. And I don't want to hear anything from you until I finish hearing from Ms. McGrady. Go ahead, Ms. McGrady. Uh, he said that he was going to shoot me in the face. He was going to shoot my dog. Oh. Uh, I made reports to the leasing office. Um, this has happened on numerous occasions. Um, every time I would have some type of report of a noise disturbance, then there would be Mr. Cedric Smith brandishing his gun. Uh, there would be stairs of intimidation anytime that I'm taking my dog in and out. It's been to the point that I'm not even comfortable with taking my dog outside on the property where I pay rent. 
I end up going down the street or sometimes I would take my dog out back. I'm just trying to do any and everything that I can to avoid all types of physical and emotional injuries and dealing with the constant threats on the stairs and stairs of intimidation. I made a noise complaint on January the 13th. Okay, this sounds bad. Um, at the leasing office. The following morning on January the 14th, I noticed Mr. Smith leaving. I left shortly at, thereafter. The time by the time that I pulled up to the red light, I noticed Mr. Smith got out of the line of the red light, which I was approaching behind him. And when he got out of the out from in front of the red light, he pulled the vehicle into the parking lot of the store, which made his vehicle face me. And there was just these stairs again. So I don't know what day would be today with all the senseless crimes and things happening um, today with people getting murdered. I don't know what day would be the day that it, it would be my day. And just I'm just trying to avoid any type of conflict or or any type of uh, harassment of any kind. And it's just getting to the point. I'm just not comfortable with being at home. I'm just feel in fear and just threatened by the erratic behavior and the constant intimidation. I also have witnesses and I have video of the both of them with making these threats. Okay, let me ask you a question. When you say he brandished a gun, do you have it like on his side and point to it? Or do you pull it? One time it was on his side at the time that he was in where I have him on video. Um, you can hear the audio of him threatening to shoot me in the face. He actually had the gun in his hand, and I've seen it on numerous occasions. Where is it? Not only just having me, I've witnessed it with a few other neighbors as well. All right. Do you have? Can you share that video? Do you want to share your screen and share that video? Yes. One more. Okay, go ahead. And if it's got audio, there's a little box you'll have to clip that says "Include Audio." When you start your share, I'm sorry. What am I supposed to be doing? Okay. So when you go to share your screen, you have to uh, click share. You have to click a little button that says audio. Where? Um, on my, I have it on. Just oh, have it. watch it on there. Okay. Then you got to be real quiet so I can hear what's said. All right. Go ahead. What date was this, real quick? Uh, this was November, this was uh, November the 16th. Okay, go ahead. No, yeah, put it in camera, I can't see it, in front of the camera. There you go. <laughs> put it in frame. Mm -hmm. I can't hear the audio. Uh, there's also, uh, did you hear? I can't hear the audio. Okay, so here you go, man. You gotta know where your, your, your camera is and hold your phone up like this so I can see it and have your audio turned up on there so I can hear it. I know where your audio is on your probably on the side. No, no, no man. I wanna I wanna hear it and see it at the same time. Okay. Oh. I, I couldn't hear it. This. Back so I can see it and hit play. <laughs> You think this doesn't need to be explained? I couldn't hear anything, ma'am. I don't know why. Is the volume not turned up on your? Uh, yes, it is. It's, it, it is turned up on the tablet. Do you have it muted? No, ma'am. Go down there where that little speaker is. See the speaker at the bottom? No, turn it around. See that speaker at the bottom? Uh, no, it's just a share button. It's not a speaker. All right, try it again. So I can turn it the other way so I can actually hear it. Uh, this way, turn it up wherever the speaker's at and play it towards the speaker. That she doesn't know where it is. Okay, play it towards your <laughs> microphone. I can hear it. Go Oh, good Lord. <laughs> yeah, Mr. McGriff, I can't, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I can't hear anything, but hold it up like this so I can at least watch the video and then you can tell me what's happening after I watch it, okay? Oh, well, this, on this video, he's actually standing in the doorway, but my, 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 my doorbell camera is what captured um, 
Is that when he had the gun on him? Ma'am? Is that when he had the gun on him? Yes. Okay. Okay, I can't, yeah, I can't. <sighs> okay. All right, what else? Oh, uh, pretty much just it. There, there, there's just been stairs of intimidation and making those threats with the gun that I that I that I'm concerned about. I think in your petition he's texted you or called you or something. On, with the, on that on that same day when I went to the leasing office, um, there were about 19 text messages uh, from their phone after I made the police report um, that evening because after the rent office had closed, when I came back, they were standing on the porch again. Um, with this gun again and making those threats again, which I ended up calling the police around 6.57 p.m. And the officer that came out to, to take the report, um, he mentioned to just pretty much just the cease and desist of what was happening. Uh, as soon as the officer left, that's when I got about 19 text messages uh, from the phone. And what did the text messages say? Um, it was the text messages basically just said, well, you tried to get me, you tried to get me arrested, but it's not going to work. Uh, there's just one, well, hold on. Yeah, there's just a text message about just uh, pictures of my, of myself and my dog on the porch. Um, basically just. This is just pretty much just the nitpicking about me making these, these reports. And every time I make a report, there's hold always some. Hold on, hold on. I sent you a text message of a picture of your porch. Yeah, pictures of my dog. Okay, all right, hold on one second. Miss Rutledge, did y'all handle it or hold on one second, Miss McGriff? He would like for me to talk to my client in a separate uh, room about some property that he's saying is at her house. Okay. So I would like to talk to my client in a uh, breakout room. I don't know why he didn't come out. He, I told him I'm, we're going to go back in here. And he wants to, more time to get another attorney. I told him that I'm not willing to come back. She, you know, she can't continue to pay. He was supposed to bring an attorney this time. So he wants an attorney. All right. I'll put y'all in there and you can talk. Okay. <laughs> what did you go? You do a breakout room one. It says Amber in there, but she was in there early. Okay. All right. She's not coming. <clears throat> All right. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Smith. Let me hear from you. Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Let me hear from you. Okay. Um, <laughs> this hide out. It started like. Uh, <laughs> it needs to stop talking. Okay, I got I got two young daughters. Uh, this is my neighbor. I hey, got us. Tell whoever it is besides you not to talk. Okay. All right. That's my my daughter, my wife. All right. Okay. Uh, I got two young daughters, a seven year old and a uh, fifteen year old, and uh, she have a pit bull, and we stay right next door to each other. And her pit bull is kind of aggressive, and my 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 daughters are very scared of them. And so my wife had asked her one day as she was getting out of the car, can, can you hold your dog on the leash? Because uh, my girls, my wife and my two dogs are scared of her. Just can you hold a dog on the leash when we come out the house, going to our car, or when we going in the house from our car? And uh, I, ain't, I, I, I didn't say nothing. And so about a week or so later, they was coming back in, and um, I heard my daughter holler she was trying to get in the dope and i asked her what was going on and she said uh that dog was running up to me and so i went ahead and i said well she didn't have the dog on the leash and she said no the dog was was off the leash and it looked like it was about to attack her and so i walked outside i did not have no gun first of all i walked outside just to ask her can you please is hold your dog on a leash when me and my family coming in out the house? And um, she just went off on me, just started snapping on me, telling my talk to my homeboy, to my shit, get her homeboy over here. I said, man, I don't know who your homeboy is. I just, I'm, you my neighbor. I'm asking you to please, I'm asking you to please hold your dog while we coming in out the house. 
I got two dogs. I got evidence too. I got every, I got pictures of her dog loose right there in front of my door when I come in out my door. I mean, I don't have no problems with her. Wait, so this is neighbors? This is this isn't even a couple we're dealing with here? Tell me in the chat. She, yeah, she be slamming ever since the incident happened. We have called the police and everything. He does the same day, and uh she be slamming the door so hard, be scaring my daughter. I got a seven-year-old daughter and a 15-year-old daughter. They be asking me why she's slamming the door so okay. hard. And we stay in a pretty kind of like rough area. And uh it be scaring my it scared my kids. And all I ask her just please just hold your dog. I have, I have no problem with her. I'm not trying to bother her in no kind of way. Uh, me, my, me and my wife, and my kids, we actually we in a, we 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 gonna move Seriously. because she been real like she been real aggravating just aggravating my family. Like I I don't say nothing to her. I go to work and come home. I don't do I don't say nothing. I'm trying to raise my kids. And she just be giving me mean stares because a dog, the dog situation. Now I'm a man. If if somebody come up to me and I have, if I have a pit bull and ask me, can you please hold your dog leash while they kids coming out the house? I'm gonna do that, ma'am, because I had a young son got mauled by a dog before, and I'm gonna do that. And I wasn't trying to hurt her. I wasn't trying to. I just asked her, please, can you just hold your dog? Yes. And she just went off. I ain't got no problem with her. I ain't trying to bother her. We neighbors, ever since that incident happened, I ain't did nothing to her. I don't stare at her. I don't even look at her. She stared at my wife and my kids funny. And my daughter is sitting right here next to me. And she can tell you that. Like, we have no problem. And I'm actually in the process of fitting the move. Because, He's fitting because the move. I don't want to deal with the situation. I just... You know, I don't want this to hinder me from moving Which to my new point. house. I don't want this on my record. And I I never tried to do anything. I just asked her, as a man, can you please respect my can wife? Respect can you respect my wife and my kids when we walk out the door? She got a big pit bull, ma'am. Um, big, massive pit bull. And it's never on the leash. And I, I, we have went to... don't need to stop talking, Mr. Smith. I don't want to hear them talking. They're talking to uh, stop. you. Okay, stop talking. Okay. And um, <laughs> we went to the office about her and everything. The office people came down here and told her, even the police told her, it's against the law not to have your dog on a leash and holding the leash. The police, Atlanta police told me this. And I have no problem with her. I just, I just want my kids to be safe while they come in and out of the house. And she be outside with her dog. And she told me she don't have to hold her dog on a leash. She even told the police that. And that when the police said, you know, that's against the law. And I'm not trying to bother her. I want to live my life. I'm taking care of my family and my kids. And I don't say nothing to her. I don't look at her. I have no problem with her. All I ask her just when me and my family come out the door, can you just, if you're outside, please hold your dog leash. If you see her dog, you'll be scared of her. Because I'm, I'm like scared of her. It's a big pit bull. And I got a seven-year-old and my 15-year-old, they two girls. Of course, they're going to be scared. But I never threatened her in any kind of way like that. I don't want to hurt her. I'm not a person that hurt people. I'm a good-hearted person. I I have given her a ride to the stove a couple of times. We, we was we was cool. We were friends. But all of a sudden, she just got mad when my when my wife asked her to hold her dog leash when we come in out of the house. And ever since then, she been slamming the door. She slammed her door so hard it knocked the pictures off my wall. But I, I still didn't say now. I went to the office and the office came to talk to her. And I ain't said nothing to her. I just go to the office and I let my wife take care of it. And um, I have no problem with her. I just want her to respect me as I respect her. These are some of the pictures of uh, her dog right here in front of my house, you see? Mm -hmm. On a leash that's right there in front of me with no leash. You can see the leash laying right there on her. And, and I walk out the door oh, on numerous of times and the dog have almost jumped on me about to push me back in the house. But now I now I need to hear the gripping conclusion of this. He got he got another one right here. Okay, so Miss McGriff, do you not keep your dog on a leash? Ma'am, at the time that dog has always been on the leash. There's videos of, of surveillance from the apartment from exactly from each time that I've had an encounter with the two of them. 
my dog is always on the leash. Like I have witnesses. My dog is always on the leash. And that time, the, those pictures, I was painting. I was in the middle of um, painting something, and they were not even at home. And I even asked if it was okay if he would sit on that side. And he was on the leash. He's always on the leash. Like I have witnesses. And there is surveillance. He's always on a leash. I've never had any complaints about my dog not being on a leash. And he's actually a one-year-old puppy. He's not big and he is not aggressive. I have not had any issues with any other neighbors. So when are you planning on moving, Mr. Smith? Uh, I'm closing on my house. It might take another maybe a month or so, but I'm closing on my house now. Um, actually, I'm supposed to go this week. Uh, either begin the next week to do a walk through, and uh, I'm moving just as fast as I can. I just bought me a new house. I'm buying. I'm not renting, and I just want to just be safe and raise my kids in a nice environment. And I don't have no problem with her. I never had a problem. I have, Your Honor, if you ask her, I have given her a ride to the store. I, I've been nice to her. I ain't never did. And then out the way, I just asked her one time to hold her dog on a leash, and she went off on me. Told me. She was gonna get her homeboys over here to do something to me and everything. Mr. And I came to her like a grown Smith. man. Mr. Smith. And, yes. Why, why'd you go up there with a gun and point to it and do No, ma'am, I did not have a gun. That that's a uh, that's a lie that she tell. I did not, I would never do that. I stay, I've been staying in this apartment for almost three and a half years. I'm raising my kids. I would not do my kids like that. I would never do that. She Ms. McGriff, let me ask you a question. If uh so Mr. Smith, what are you looking at? Moving out 30 days. Uh yeah, about 30, really April. April, because they gotta do the close, we gotta close it and everything. You know, it takes a minute when you're actually buying a house. <laughs> Just um I'm scheduled to go look at it today. If I can't make it today, because I'm on I'm on the phone and do a court. Uh, I'm gonna go do it probably Monday or Tuesday for my walkthrough, and then they're gonna do all the paperwork and stuff. I should be out of here by April, maybe a week after April or so. But I'm moving, and I don't have no problem with her. I don't stare at her. I don't do nothing to her. I got, but, but I got my daughter right here to vouch for me, and she will let you know. There, nobody that's sitting there can, can talk to you. Oh, but okay, I mean, okay. So Griff, if we do something and make you folks come back. Ma'am, like the second week of April for a compliance until he moved. Would you be okay with that? Yes, I would because I am still in fear because the accusations that I have made, and again, I've never spoken with an officer. Um, whatever officer he spoke with, I haven't spoken with them, but it's documented. The officer also has copies of audio and videos of these threats. So, Mr. Smith, if I just come back for a compliance. And then she'll be okay once you move. When will you, for sure, when will you be gone? End of March? I mean, end of April? Uh, I'd be gone by April, by oh, the end of April, uh, sometime in the middle to the end of April. But, ma'am, my issue, I am being truthful. Like, I do not bother her that, nothing. Not and, and really, uh, my wife called the police on her. Like, it, it was... It started from my wife asking her until, you know, I asked her and she just, she been going on and on about things. She been slamming the door. She not, she not in fear for her life. I wouldn't do nothing to that woman. I would not, I wouldn't dare do nothing to her. You know what I'm saying? Because I respect women, period. I, I'm raising two daughters of mine. I wouldn't dare do that. And, and she know, she stood right there next to us and talked to the police when the police came here. I, I got, yeah, I believe I can find him. Besides the talk, I don't need to hear it. So, here's my thing now. So, um, hey, baby. It's free. What if, do we have some sort of date in May? Compliance in May. Let me pull up the calendar. May the second at ten a.m. Mr. Brown, you're not driving, are you? Are you driving, <laughs> ma'am? Not you, Mr. Brown. Are you moving in the vehicle? Okay. 
You can rejoin when you're no longer moving in that vehicle. You do not stay on there while you're moving in the vehicle. <laughs> you can you can see what so he was saying the whole time. McGriff will get you folks a compliance date, and Mr. McGriff, if he moves before then, and you want to dismiss anything, you know, reach out to Miss Freight and Mr. Smith. Okay. Um, your, 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 your Honor? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. I know uh, you said we come back, but this is the thing, like, she have told so many stories. I'm afraid for her to even tell another story on me because we stay right next door. This woman, no, I do not bother her. But we're going to put on there that unless it's something like there's a gun or something involved, she can come back and she threatened and she says you threatened to shoot her. We'll come back I did not do that, ma'am. I would never okay. do that. So we'll come back in May for a compliance. As Ms. McGriff said, Ms. Griff, don't let me put words in your mouth. That if he's moved, you he feel safer, am I right? So we come back in May, and if you've moved and you're out of there, she, she can dismiss it. Okay, okay. You're it. right. So if you can place your email in the chat, and Ms. McGriff, if you put your email in the chat, We'll see yeah, no kidding. Copies of the order will give you a compliance date to come in and we'll check back with you and see how it's going. Okay, so the order will be in continuance until um, the further. Yeah, uh, yeah, until we get the day in May. Ms. Reed's probably got to figure out which day in May. Because I don't he won't be moved by that. Compliance date scheduled out. That's why I didn't want to continue. May 2nd, 10 a.m. All right, May 2nd, 10 a.m. If he Thank really you. had that uh, moment, you're on. You're on. You're on. He wouldn't yeah. have bothered showing up. Uh, you know, we stay right next door to each other. Our door is like, Side by side, right, right next door. They got to stay 20 feet away from each other while you're at home. Okay, cool. uh, I mean, like, okay, cool. uh, yeah, I mean, but if I walk out my door and she walking out her door, what do you she want? You can say something like, I'm not trying to bother her, but I'm, I'm afraid that she Wait, might. Man, here's the thing With common sense. Let's check it. Let's get some common sense, everybody. Yep. If she's walked out the door and you see her, just hold up a second. Wait on her to get in her car or whatever, then you walk out. You know, that's the thing. Every time I walk out the door, she open the door like me and my like me and my family will walk out the door. And as we come out the door before we can shut the door, she'll open the door. She opened the door one time and spit in the L while me and my family was coming out the door. But I, I, I still didn't say anything. But I'm just telling you, like, I'm not the problem here. I'm not I'm not trying to bother okay. her. Here you go. All right. 20 feet at home, except for passing, going to a car in general. OK. Oh, okay, ma'am. Good language in there, but y'all both have to engage some common sense. This is a big old world. Yeah, you right, ma'am. You right, and I have no problem with her. I had been <laughs> left at discussing that problem alone, but she keep going you there. Right, like she came in and did a TPO order, like she does shit. about okay. three weeks after that. Like I, I, I haven't said nothing to her. My kids, my wife, we don't even say nothing to her. Okay, yeah. so both of y'all. Don't. Stay away from each other. Go away. You know. I don't. I don't say nothing to her. Do it. Keep it going. Keep it going like that. If you put your email in the chat, you can do that. And don't be. Yes, ma'am. And, and and you know that goes for both y'all. I've had plenty of these neighbor cases, and I always can't stand having to hear these neighbor cases. Don't I know, ma'am. And all I'm doing is trying to raise my kids. And I ask yeah. her, ma'am. I'm, if... I'm saying, don't go outside, Mr. Griffin. Stand there when you know people want to come outside. Y'all have to still yeah. be kind. Of yeah, yes, yeah, you're right. Sometimes I pull up in my car, like right now, her car parked right next to mine. Our car be parked right next to each other. Okay, but well, I pull up. Here you go. All I can do is put that language in there, and y'all got to be able. If we can put, she can file a contempt. Miss Bray, a contempt will be filed. But I can't. No, neither one of y'all come to live with me. So right now, you're living where you live, and y'all yeah. have to be adults about it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm trying to do. I just don't want no more trouble. I got you. All right, both of y'all, if your email's in the chat, y'all can both leave the meeting. Okay, and when is, when is the next uh, court date? We're going to email it to you, but it's May, shoot, let's turn the page, May 2nd, don't you say Yes, right? the 2nd at 10 a.m. You should be. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma okay. Living Thank in another you. place and not caring. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Bye, then. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Now, Ms. Rutledge, he was just in here, and he left again. I removed him. He was driving, Your Honor. Was he driving again? He told me he wants a continuance to get an attorney. I told him today was the day he was supposed to bring an attorney. And, you know, so we'll see. Let, let's let, let him speak. Um, oh, he's connecting go. to audio, so. Mr. Brown, is your vehicle moving? 
Take yourself off mute. Take yourself off of mute. I can't hear you. Um, Your Honor, I was telling you when you was hearing the beeper sound, it was a truck backing up. So I just so for the to make contact, I had to move. I was okay. trying to explain. Are you moving now? That's all. The I'm answer was yes. No, I'm the in the park. Moving. I'm in the park now. Be still. Be still. What yes. is your warning now? You had time to talk to Miss Rutledge. Oh, we, we spoke about a couple of things. And um, what I spoke to her about, uh, and I said about my property damage. What can I do for that? I'm and I also- Talk about the TPO. You asked me? You asked me what I talked about, and I'm telling you. So I then- I focus on the TPO. That's all I want to know. What are we doing today? Get back on mute, Mr. Brown. I think you hit the wrong button. Get back on mute. Oh my God. I don't know how she did All right, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. what the TPO only. I want my TPO to stand as it is. All right, then let's have it here. Raise your right hands. Yo, swear for testimony about the is the truth, soul truth, nothing but the truth. It's been a long day. Yes. Yes. Right. Go ahead, Mr. Brown. It's your turn. Go ahead. You got to state your case. Yes, only thing I was just saying, uh, Your Honor, um, I just want everything to stand the way it is for my safety. Okay, so now and I'm for you to present your case. What happened? You get this is you to present your case. You ask me what happened? You have to present your case. That means you have to testify to everything that has happened, and then Miss Rutledge will cross examine you. And if she wants to call Miss Brown, she can. So this is the hearing. Go. I just spoke. I just spoke with Miss Rutledge, and I just said, if there's anything, I just go ahead and get me a, a attorney because I've been trying to call, and they said they not available in this time space. Okay, but Mr. Brown, I just, I just today is the day we're having a hearing, so let's go. It's time to hear him. Present your case. I, I, on the 19th, down Atlantic City, she um uh, uh she uh put a, a restraint order on me that I wasn't even aware. She came up Atlanta on that same night. Everything that she assaulted me on the phone with a um with with a phone number that I wasn't aware of. I wasn't aware of. Answer the phone. It was her. I came down 136 Prior Street. And I filled out everything she said. Later that night, around 12 or 1 o'clock, she from New Jersey flew to uh, uh, Atlanta and carried out everything that she said that she was going to do. And everything is written down. Everything is written down when I went to 136 Pride Street. All right. Mr. Brown, you have to testify as to what happened. <laughs> Writing it down isn't your testimony. You wrote it down. But, but, but that's the first when I when I talked to them, they said to go down there. So she came down there. She damaged my door. She damaged my door, and she did physical harm to me. Is that testifying? I'm asking. Thanks, Marjorie. Mr. Brown, I'm being very patient. You failed out your. Petition. I'm trying to be patient too. That's now, why I just now, <laughs> listening to me, Mr. Brown. This is the day where you present your case. You say, um, He's trying to be patient. she called me 482 times. I know it was her phone because I spoke to her on the phone. Here's how she assaulted me. She slapped me. She threatened me. You have to testify to the detail. What you put in writing is just to seek a TPO. So please just tell me what happened exactly. You have to tell me in your words. Because Miss Rutledge is going to cross-examine you based on Okay, what all right, all right. I just I thought I just said it to you. She and after that, she when she hit Can, me. Give me dates. I need dates when this happened. That was on like the 22nd. The 22nd or so when she grabbed what me month? by my testicles and my reproductive organ <laughs> and pulled it so hard, I started bleeding. I started bleeding. I, I dialed 911. I asked um, dispatch to please stay on the phone. Do not get off the phone until a police arrive. And the then when police... Ms. Go ahead, ma'am. The 22nd of what? January? No, December. 
But Mr. Brown, you're all over the place. You got oh, no, the month in a year. I, I never, I never said no. I'm, uh, December. That's Mr. December. Brown, I'm having more time trying to get you on track and telling you what I need to hear. So okay, I, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I never been through this before, Your Honor. No, um, but I have, so that's why I'm keeping people. I understand. Up. You have experienced this. I don't. This was December the twenty second. Yeah, man. Uh, Your Honor. And you had talked to her on the phone. What day? <laughs> Uh, I can't hear you. Yeah. What day had you talked to her on the phone before she came down? That was like the 19th. Okay. And he said, all right, now go ahead after the and the 20th. Yes, the 19th. And then it was it, it was um announcements calls. I didn't know the phone numbers. So I answered the phone. And then she told me she's coming down Atlanta. This is what she's gonna do when she get there. She told me she's gonna put my hair on the plate. She told me, um, she, she she told me she was gonna do bodily harm. I'm gonna brush your door in. She told me all these things, like in pretty much that order right there. And then I and then after that, when she when I got the physical threats, and that's when I went to 136 of uh, Prior Street. I felt I, I I felt spilled out everything what she said. And then from there, from there, she came in later that night. She bust my door, damaged my door, everything. Police arrived. I, I spoke with police. I spoke with the uh, police, and they said for the time since she lived there, she has to, um, we can't remove her. She can stay there. So, uh, so that happened right there. Now, after that, a day or two later, that's when I was physically assaulted with, with my testicles and my reproductive organ. And then, and that's when I, I called 911 again and had them remain on the phone. I showed them blood. They seen everything. Um, when she poured everything, I was in so much pain, I couldn't even walk. I, I fell to my knees. I called 911. When the police came, they witnessed everything. I believe the lady name was Fullington. They, they believe everything. And that's after that, they arrested her. Okay, so tell me, she's in Jersey. Obviously, y'all are going through a divorce in Jersey. So you moved to Atlanta? Yeah, Your Honor, I have a... You, you talking to me, Your Honor? You moved to yeah. Atlanta? Yes, Your Honor, I have a place in New Jersey, <laughs> and, I, and I purchased a place in 2020 in Atlanta, okay. if I'm answering you correctly. So you moved here, here. She knew where you moved to and told you that she's coming down here. Did yes, she did. Prior to that? And I yeah. documented everything at did the you, family division. I documented all that, yes. No, but you, you still have to put it, you have to testify to it. Doesn't matter what's in the paper, you still have to testify. What yes, had happened prior to that? What kind of violence or why did she get on the plane, fly down here, and, and do that to you? I say it again, ma'am. Like, was there a fight prior to this? That made no, her it, it, it um, which it, it wasn't a fight when she came in. It wasn't no fight, anything prior. Cause when she signed that on the nineteenth of, of of December, I haven't seen my wife in over six. We've been separated like six, seven months. I have not seen her. I haven't seen her. And then she, she, so what she made and her I would, here? What made her come yes. down? I, I can't hear you, Your Honor. What made her come to Atlanta then? She got to answer that. She okay. came there and told me that she's going to um just all stop the and grab threats and everything she she said. Yeah. And then she came down there. It was about 12, 1 o'clock that night. And the officer name was Keys. I remember that K E I S. Keys. He came there and I told him I'm not opening the door because I fear for my safety. I asked the dispatcher, please stay on the phone until the um, police arrive for me to come out. But during that time, with a metal pipe, she damaged my property. She damaged my door. She damaged my door, my property, everything. I have pictures and everything of that. She she damaged all of my property, and then until until a uh, police arrived, that's when I including that's my, when I not limited to my organ. and I came out through the back door and met the police. I, I met the man. police, and then. That's when we had the conversation, and he he explained a few things to me, and at the time my wife, and I, I agreed. 
Did she threaten to come down and grab you by your testicles? <laughs> she didn't threaten me, to, but, she, but she told me she was going to do body damage to me. Okay. And, and I, I yeah, that she told me that. that. Okay. And she's going to have my head in the plate, and I'm going to have you six feet under. Those exact, those exact words that she said. Okay. Exact words. And I wrote that down. Exact words which she said to me. Okay. Ms. Rutledge, do you have any questions for him? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Brown, um, you are currently married to Ms. Brown, correct? Yes, I am. And you all have resided in the home in Atlanta, Georgia together? At the time we was, yes. Okay. And you stated that she um, came from New Jersey to Atlanta. Can you tell me why she was coming to Atlanta? What, did you did you have a conversation with her about why she was upset? I didn't have no conversation with her. She called me and, and said, because I was never answering the phone because it was announcement, announcements, uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, phone cards that I wasn't aware of. And I've written one of the I've written one of the numbers down on the report. And I didn't know who was calling me. So when I answered the phone, that's when she spoke to me and gave me all those threats. I did not know who it was. I just did you, answered. Okay, all right. I heard you. Did you have another woman in your home when Miss Brown came home? It was a witness because let me explain. And it was my son and my daughter as well. They heard everything that she said, and they advised me to go to 136 Strive Street and document this, and I did. And once she did that, okay. uh, and let me finish, because you asked me a question, Ms. Rutgers, and I'm not being rude. Once she said that, they said, I'm going to stay here. And, and I asked them to be a witness. Have you ever assaulted Donna Brown? No, I haven't. So if I show a picture to you of Ms. Brown, have you ever put your hands on her or assaulted her in any way? No, I haven't. And I told the police officers that that's what she was going to show because she get drunk and passes out because she her sugar level goes low. And this ain't the first time that this happened. So if I show you some pictures... Um, of Ms. Brown, you know, uh, as, as far as physical um, altercations, can you can I show you those pictures? I have a picture. I'm one aware of the pictures. Yep, I'm aware of the pictures. All right, let me show you. I'm going to share the screen. One second. Oh no. They just took down the video. They just took down this video. But I believe I believe Biggin sent it to me, so give me a moment. In the meantime, enjoy enjoy this. It's fantastic. Your Honor, this is number four, Hazel Sleep, cause number 23L00251. You can't see it, but if I could brush my hair away, also, can you brush this hair? If any of you laughs, you're, you're, you're going straight to a bad place. I'm just saying. Away from my eyes before we even start. No, not quite from my eyes, but up to where the mark is showing so the judge can see the extremities. Judge, he was trying to grind so hold, Let's sleep. Hold on a sec. Let me do some talking first. We've got to establish stuff. Uh, and then- so you're my public attention. I mean, uh, so, Your Honor, we're here uh, on for arraignment. Uh, two counts. One is obstruction. The other one is resisting. I reviewed these charges with Miss Sleep in detail.
We acknowledge receipt, waive formal reading, ask the court to enter plea of not guilty to each count. And Senator Woman. Regarding uh, probable cause, we stipulate for purposes of arraignment. We also stipulate to name, date of birth. Um, as an officer of the court, I represent that Ms. Sleep qualifies for uh, indigent representation. Um, she is, does not currently have an income. She has some job opportunities uh, open. Uh, and she is currently living out of her car. I ask you also to answer that and extrapolate on for that further, Your Honor, if I could. And um, hold on, hold on, I, if I could, my next career, my next job, Your Honor, um, that I would pursue is is um, sign language, but for for like concert for like um, celebrities doing concerts. So oh like, yeah, that's a great area to go into. And the reason being is because I'm a rap artist, ma'am, and and if you would, after we're done with business, I would like to lay down maybe a three and a half minute rap for you, if I could. Well, well, we're gonna have to get through. Okay, we're going to have to get through. Yes, ma'am. Back, back to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Throwing it back to me. I got you. Okay. You're on about so, you. I will enter a not guilty plea, the stipulation to probable cause, um, waiver formal reading. And did you have any questions about the rights that attach at arraignment? Do I have any questions about the rights to attach an arraignment? Is what you asked me? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm certain. Um, what are you exactly meaning by that? Yes. The constitutional okay. rights that we discussed earlier. You attach an arraignment. So you're asking me if I had personal recognizance to come back and take care of these legal issues? No, or, no, 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 no. no. I'm just asking that you understood basically of rights that attach an arraignment. And I just want you to make sure that you've been made aware. Oh, the rights that are attached. So, so as far as law abiding behavior, no similar incidents. No, no, we haven't gotten there yet. We haven't gotten there yet. It's okay. just that you have the right to um, appointment of a public defender if you can't afford one. You have a right to a trial. There was a whole list of rights. And did Mr. DePeister go through those with you? Well, I know I have. Um, can I read you my Miranda rights that I know? But I didn't get them read last night, period. But I said I would know. Okay, that's, that's well, so if an officer read them to me, I would shut up, ma'am, and, and, and respect the authority of the court more, uh, very much more. But I, and I'm not disrespecting the authority so, of the court, if I, I, can I, be asleep, I would say I have the right to remain silent because of these charges, okay, that I, there I'm just, charges. And anything I say can will be used against me in court of law so, to an attorney. If I can afford an attorney, one will be provided to me by the state of Washington. For instance, not only that, do I understand those rights? Yeah. You have the right to a fair and speedy trial. This is a pretty quick trial. I am. Yeah, cool. And not only that, I have the right to face my accuser, and I'm not the accuser accusing myself as okay. a prosecutor. And I have the right to be sentenced by a judge before, without a jury of my peers. Okay. That's one I'm missing. I'm not sure which one. Um, right you have to an right. appeal within 30 days. <laughs> you almost had it. Almost not had it. The right to an appeal within 30 days. Very Let's good. go. Very good. Good. I'm certain you'll work that somehow into your next uh, big hit, right? Hey, so, no, do you think she ever just woke up one day and said she wanted to go to law school? Okay. No, I think you got tired of this shit, ma'am. I understand, but uh, I, I know you have a lot to say, and I'm certain you have a lot it of sure interesting does. things to say. You just have to appreciate I'm at work right now, and so I'm trying to get through my my job and do what I'm supposed to do. others waiting on you. Protect your rights and make sure that you've been informed of everything. Okay. Thank you. So, I've entered the not guilty plea to stipulation, the appointment, and is there any objection to release, or is there a request for... No yeah. objection to release your abiding behavior. All right, so we're going to release you today, and on each of the charges, and and what is to be when, ma'am? And you're to have no criminal law violations. I'm sorry. What was your? Did you have a question? Well, the next time you would like to see me in court, the law uh, in person is when, because maybe that's. Well, it'll be. Yeah. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna order no, that they'll be giving you a copy of the court order, and I'll tell you right now, it'll be March 9th at 2 p.m. and that'll be out here in Lakewood. Cool it off easy enough because March 13th I have FFS consultation and, and okay. nothing will get in my way of that. And I've also added your attorney's contact information to that court order so that you have all of that information on one court order, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, give me just a second to talk to the attorneys. Um, can the, uh, you can mute attorney... yourself so I can't hear you, but you can keep talking. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I, no, I, no, I, no. I, I'm, you're going to hear all of it because you have a right to. I'm, <laughs> I'm addressing them, and I know virtually it's hard to tell them. <laughs> asking the attorneys to review the court order for sufficiency. Yes, ma'am. I apologize, Judge Barry, if, I, if you perceive me as being disrespectful in any way. or no, I think your attorney will explain to you that I'm very tolerant 
Um, and uh, well, I hope I hope you think so, Paula. It's just we do need to get through the things we need to get to, and I understand it's a stressful process. Anything further from either of the parties? Your Honor, that appears to conform. I've attached my signature. Thank you from the city, Your Honor. All right, I'll ask that you be given a copy, and then we will see you in Lakewood on that March 19th that I previously mentioned. Okay, any questions for me? Well, my paperwork has it. No, not too many, ma'am. You're a busy woman. I'll, I, if, I, if I have to meet you in person, I'll spit uh, one more hip-hop raps for you then. All I'm right. Well, if we have time, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how that all plays out, okay? Well, they tried to throw me out in the clothes in the cold season. They tried to steal my life from the shame for the fucking reason. I'm the Messiah, but I get this all right. Came back I'm, eyes cold. Now, I'm, so you know, see. remember, I'm, I'm going to have to, I am at work, and so you yeah. push words and stuff. Ma'am, thank you for your, well, you know, right. God says nobody on earth can judge. My own, except for the court appointed judge, and well, yeah, that that's, means, that's why we call you honorable yeah, because literally you're taking on the right. Uh, it's like a I'm not sucking on your toes, but I, I appreciate it. All right, have, have a good afternoon. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for Thank you. All right. All right, folks. Anybody got anything they want to spin? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. We'll see you guys uh, next time. Can you see this picture? Yes, I can. Is this your wife? That's my wife. What what um do you see the um bruises and the black eyes? I see everything. And can I ask you what date what date was that on? My question was to you, have you ever assaulted Miss Brown? Before. Now back no, to our regularly haven't. scheduled program. And, I, and I'm not. asking you, what date was that <laughs> picture taken? I'm just showing you another picture. Is this your wife? With That's my wife. Uh, have you ever seen her with these bumps and uh, bruises on her face? Until she showed me those pictures, the the the, the night that she passed out. And, and that's what I'm asking you. What's the date on that, Miss Rutledge? Oh, that's nasty. Do they establish that he I'm did that? Stop sharing the screen. Okay. All right. So, um, Miss Rutledge, just, what I'm asking. Let me you, let me ask the questions, Mr. Brown. Have you ever assaulted your wife? No, I haven't. Okay. And on the day that you are saying that she um, came to your home, did you have another woman who you've had an extramarital affair with? No, I didn't, ma'am. Ms. Rutgers, I'm asking you. Okay. Please. You're saying no. Okay. All right. And have, has, had, um, was your wife defending herself at the time? Yes. Incident. What did she do? Did you touch her? Oh, you saying the the, you saying defending defend myself as far as what? Did she? Did you grab your wife around the never. neck? Never, never, never grabbed my wife. Never. never. Can you hear have me, Miss Roberts? Admitted to your wife that you have grabbed her and that you um did not want her to press charges against you because of your job. Never. I have, what, what I have all job, the text. What is your job, Mr. Brown? I'm a, I'm a firefighter, Lang City firefighter. Okay. And do you have any kind of moral clause or anything like that as far as with your job, as far as if they found out you um, had assaulted your wife? I can't hear you. Can you repeat yourself? As a firefighter, is there any type of moral clause where you would not want them to know if you assaulted your wife? I didn't know assault my wife. I, every 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 job is like that, Miss Relish. I, I never assaulted my wife. And was she trying to defend herself at that time? Not at not at all, Miss Relish. The proof is in the pudding. She came in and damaged my door. She and I and I went down. To 136 Prior Street, I documented everything she said she was going to do. So 
that first of all, I just wanted that barrier of protection. After that, she came there about 12 something that night, beat my door in and my windows with a big steel pipe. After that, I'm on the phone with 911 and the tape can always be poor. Uh, 911, I kindly, I beg the dispatch to please do not hang up this phone until police arrive. And the dispatch granted me that and I thank them so much for that. I came out the back. I talked to the police. My door damaged. Everything broken up. We spoke. The officer Keys, K-E-I-S, said, well, due to y'all live here, y'all have to stay. Uh, she can stay here. This next. Okay. I, I said, okay. He said, one of y'all stay in one room, other one can stay down. I asked my son and my daughter and my witness, who she trying to say I had a magic fair with. No. As a witness, they was all on, because I had, when she was talking, I had the speakerphone on. So that's when they advised me to go down to 136 Pride Street. I went there, signed it. When she came in, she carried out her actions, everything that she said she was going to do. But the police officer said to me that uh, due that she had that, uh, she lived there with me, that uh, you stay in one room, I stay in the other. A day or two later, a day or two later, I never did anything to assault my wife. And that's why I was physically assaulted. And then she didn't even know it. I dialed 911 in my pocket. And I asked the dispatch. I said, this hey, is the same. Hold on, hold on. She dropped off. I dropped off? Oh. Can you hear me, Miss Your Honor? I can hear you, but she had dropped off. Okay. So what I was saying, oh, hold on, you gotta wait for her lawyer to get you back on here. Okay, thank you so kindly, ma'am. I'm sorry, my computer restarted. It's okay. It's okay. So where I left off at, I haven't seen her, this. When I called nine one one, she didn't know my phone was on. Uh, and I called, then I called dispatch police again. I said, this is the same situation. I said, I, already I gave don't them believe my address. One of them. They already knew. The address <laughs> so is I have no idea. Ago. I'm calling for the same thing. I told them I was solid. I was on my knees. I was on my knees and everything. And I have audio recording. When she said that I scratched it myself. Her, her stories are so inconsistent. She said, I scratched myself. Do you, have any, do you have any um, recordings or yes, uh, pictures? Yes, yes, I do. And I just okay. I just had to find out how to I have everything. Hold and on. she oh, Ms. Brett, she, let her finish. Hold on, let her finish her question. She just okay. said okay. All right, man. I was talking and then she let just her finish, let her finish her question. No problem. No problem, Mr. Brown. Is it yeah. true that for this, you want your wife to stay away from you. Prior to this? Now. Now? Yes. Yeah, for, for my safety. Is there a bond? Do you know if there is a bond in place where she cannot come to your home? Until you just telling me that. I'm not getting anything in writing or anything. When, when I speak with everybody, you're, you're telling me this now. But I don't, I'm, I don't get anything in writing, Ms. Rutledge. I don't have anything. If I show you something that you signed in New Jersey where you dismissed the temporary protection order in New Jersey, did you agree that you all would not have any contact with each other? Yes. And did everything she, I did was, Did she sign that saying she will have no contact with you? Yes, but that's in the state of New Jersey. And as far as Atlanta, as far as Property wise and all that. Now let's at least is present because the laws is different from New Jersey and <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> did you have the judge? Did your? Do you know if your wife went? I'm sorry, this guy explaining the law is comical to me. To jail after this incident. <laughs> yeah, I know to jail because state. she kept via text messages. <laughs> please drop all of your. Drop my charges and do you call Miss Rutledge, so do you, and I okay. drop all my colors. You ask me a question, so can I finish, okay. please, Miss Rutledge? It's out mm -hmm. of respect. You, you, she 
when she was getting arrested, I had everything. She begging me to please drop the charges. If you drop the charges, I will drop all the mines on you. I didn't even know I even had any charges on me because I haven't seen her in six, seven months. And I have all that in documentation. Did you get some documentation that you have been that there's a bond in place that Miss um, Brown will not contact you? Is that sufficient? What do you? I mean, you said you want to make sure she cannot contact you. She signed yes. something in New Jersey. So, yes. are you willing to accept that in the state of New Jersey? I've been signed that in New Jersey. That all that, that's the done deal in New Jersey, but we're talking about Atlanta now, Miss Rutledge. Hold on, hold on. Now she just okay, there she is on her computer. Go ahead. Okay, take your time. More than Atlanta, all of Fulton County. So, what remedy do you want besides the bond that is in place that she will not contact you? She does not want to go to jail. What do you want today? Do you want to be heard? Do you want to set up some time where you all can set, uh, exchange your clothes? You know, this is a civil action. So I just want to know what do you want to accomplish today by, you know, uh, I mean, you, we have you, both you going said on here. your piece. She's heard you. Can we just, you know, uh, the judge has explained that yes. you have a bond. She has a bond. If she violates it, she will be arrested. Her bond could be revoked. She could go to jail. What yeah. more do you want today? Uh, Miss Rutledge, out of all respect, me and you just spoke about that in the meeting room. When, 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 when uh, the meeting uh, the, room, the judge said that's going to meet room, and you wrote it down. I told you I want my property. I want, I want to be, yeah, I, I want there. my property. Everything that she did to my property, I want to be reimbursed with that. I did tell you that. Do you remember that? Nope. Well, I talked to my Ms. Rutledge, about I'm that. Miss Rutledge, I'm just asking you a question. Do you remember that? Yes. I, I said that to you, Miss Rutledge. I'm an honest person. You asked me, I told you. And then also I said to you, you um she keeps saying that she wants her belongings. I'ma have that. I have no problem with that. But I also told you I want mines as well in New Jersey. Did I explain that to you? Mm -hmm. Um Miss Rutledge. Yes. Did I explain that? I'm an honest person. So okay. she can, I don't know. So, okay, let me, I, 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 okay, we can, you know, we can discuss. Ms. Rutledge, can discuss. I, okay, so. Ms. Are Rutledge, you, do not let me it, finish, Ms. I, Rutledge. Let me, let me ask you a question, okay? Go ahead, Ms. Rutledge. If we continue hear, this mom. hearing for 30 days and you all set up a time for you to exchange this property, would you be willing to dismiss this temporary protection order? I'm not dismissing those, this protection order. I'm not doing that. I don't feel safe. I trusted the system and the system failed me. I've never been in so much pain in my life. Okay. No. All right. Well, no further I'm not doing that. You want to? Okay. All right. Let um. The system let me down. Okay. No further questions, Pam. Your Honor. I, I do ask that I may be able to um recross examine him after I talk to my ask my clients some questions. Okay, Ms. Rutledge, what were the dates on those pictures? I didn't want to interrupt because it gets too complicated interrupting. What were the dates on those pictures? Can I give you the dates? Those pictures. Can you um Ms. Give Brown, me a I got I got the date. No, what date was those where are those pictures from? July 22nd, 2021. Okay. I just wanted to establish a history of domestic and it, violence. And it, and it went from, from there. And I just had pictures from every single day of the process. And I had video recordings as well of okay. all the. All physical. right. So, Ms. Brown, I want to um, just ask you some. Um, I would judge, um, did you have any more questions about no, it? I, I was just, I didn't want to interrupt because it seemed to be hard to okay. get you to So, I just okay. um, Ms. Okay. Brown, can you. Um, Tell me, do you have a history where your husband, Edward Brown, has assaulted you? Yes, a lot. It's been going on for years. Okay. I, have re I have recordings on my phone. I have the pictures, the documents, the threats that he has made to me about killing me, cutting me up. I'm not going nowhere. I'm you're not getting a divorce. Like the whole 
It's just crazy. It's just an ongoing thing. Okay. Let me just ask you a question. On the day of December <laughs> 19th. Yes. Did you damage his property? December 19th, I came there with the police. And with the police, they tried to call Eddie. And Eddie would not answer the door. I told the police why I was there, that I lived there. And I told Eddie that why I was coming as well. And he knew why I was coming. So I when I, I said, I'm coming. When I come, I'm coming with the police to make sure I protect myself. The police met me at the house. The police called Eddie. He did not answer the phone. He police sat there with me and said, go ahead and knock on the door, Ms. Brown. She said, this is your house. We can't tell you what to do with your house. You can do anything you want to do with your house. We have no rights to that at all. But he doesn't need to come out the house. So, he, so I kept knocking on the door. The police kept calling him. He did not respond. So I kept him banging on the door, trying to get the door open to unlock the door to get in. And he would not answer. So the cops was, had left because they said, he's not going to come to the door. We're not going to keep sitting around here waiting. So they left. And then when I start banging on the door harder and harder and harder, Eddie finally came downstairs, him and the woman that he was with. And he, he said, I'm calling the cops. I said, go right ahead and call the cops. The cops was here. Be my guest. I said, but you're coming out this house today. And I'm going to see what's going on in that house. I came there. I came there. The cops came back. He finally opened the door. He came around the back. The cops talked to him. The cops talked to me. The cops asked me, did I want to go in the house? I said, yes. They said, there is a woman in the house, but we just want to make sure you are right with that. And she's going to be there because he wants her to be there for, for now. I said, fine. I went into my house after the police had left. Every day after they made sure everything was okay. Eddie's son and his girlfriend would, did not stay there. It was just me, Edward, my husband, and this woman that he was sleeping with in my living room all night no. long, talking <laughs> on talking things out, trying to find out what's going on, how long this affair has been. I sat and cleaned my house up all around my house because I haven't been there in a while. She sat on the couch and refused to leave. And he was with her saying, it's okay until that morning. Nobody went to sleep that night. I stayed up all night, everybody did. We and I talked and wanted to see exactly what's going on, how long this has been going on. Told the girl, Do you know he was married? And she was like, Yeah. She said, We've been together. This is my boyfriend. And all of a sudden, I said, Really? I said, Okay. I said, Well, you need you have to leave my house. I had her leave my house. Okay, wait, wait. I, I missed part of this because I was running around trying to figure out the, the, the background in the stream. Did he bring his his new side chick to her house? Because that's pretty crazy. She was like, well, I'm not going to leave until he comes with me. I said, he's not coming with you. I said, he's staying right here to talk to me. I said, however you got here is however you want to get back. He said, well, I want him to drive me to the airport. I said, he's not driving you to the airport. What makes you think that you can have your way in my house? I said, the laws in Georgia? Because it's not yes, your house. Yes, and when I say you need to leave and this is my home, you need to leave. And he's telling you to leave right now. It ain't like last night. It's time for you to go so I can be able to talk to him. She be tried to refuse to leave, but eventually uh, she got outside. Once she got outside in my garage, the I closed my door and it was done. I said, if you don't leave my premises, I will call yep. the cops and they will make you leave. And I left it at that. I went in the house. I let them chit chat and talk. He gave her some money to go get a ticket to get back home. And that was it. I came and that was on. The 20th, because I came there at 19th at one o'clock in the morning with the police. So I was up all night. On the 20th, I went and I was sleeping because I was tired. So I relaxed and chilled and I was in my house. Nothing would happen at all. Everything was calm. Everything was cool. I went and everything was fine. I went to the store. And it came back in. Eddie was drinking like he normally does. And then he started talking to me the, on the 20th, the, tw the 21st. No, 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 the 20th. He started talking to me in a disrespectful manner. 
And I'm like, I'm not doing this because I was really there going to see exactly who was in my house. Cause I told him, I said, I see her on my camera. I hear y'all talking. I will be there. He, I, he kept saying, no, nobody's there. Ain't nobody here. I said, Eddie, I'm not stupid. I'm coming. And then when I got off the phone, he was like, my wife is on her way here. She is coming. When she says she's going to come, she's going to come. She might even be here right now. But I got to get you out of this house. And the girl refused to leave. She wanted to stay overnight anyway. She was like, I will, I've been here for a couple of days. I said, OK. That, I didn't have this no, is wild. Didn't do anything. I just kept to myself. I talked to them that time. And a day or two later, Eddie was drinking. He started talking about you ain't eating this food. Start being disrespectful. I'm not dealing with this. I said, I'm not dealing with this. I said, you're not going to come up here and talk to me and be nasty to me and be disrespectful. So he came and started choking and grabbed me by my neck. I was getting ready to leave the house. I was getting ready to leave the house to go to the store. He goes and comes around my my neck and, and my back, hold my arms in front of me and would not allow me to go. And I kept saying, get off me, get off me, get off me. Like, I'm not doing this. Because it, it's starting to get, like, the violence starts. When he starts drinking and getting aggressive and howling and screaming and cussing. And I'm not doing this. I've been through enough. And I said, this girl in my house, you've been seeing her all this time, and I'm done. I'm done. I wasn't violent at all. But when you sit up around here and have your hands around my neck, and don't want to let me go, that's a problem. So I got my arm away and I pulled his genital a little bit to him to let me go. I went into the bathroom because I was crying and I was upset and I cleaned myself off, went to the bathroom, I opened the door and he got his pants. Whoa, time out. She just, she said said that like that's something you do. I I pulled his genitals a little bit so I could go. (laughs) You know, the way you always do, right? Oh, good Lord. Hands there walking towards the bathroom. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I start putting my camera time. out and videoing it <laughs> and taking pictures. I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, I'm calling the cops because you made me bleed. I said, what do you mean I made you bleed? I said, you don't freaking f- make hickeys on my guy down here. Do you see me calling the cops? And I didn't do it to you. I said, I didn't even do nothing to you, but pull your balls, like touch your balls to pinch you to get you <laughs> off of me. Because I know all you got to do is touch those genitals just a little bit and you're going to release. So you next thing I know, you're defending yourself after you yes. grab you. Oh, you, uh, yes. You I didn't to do, you, uh, put your hands on him first? No, not at all. Not at <laughs> all. I came out the bathroom. He had his pants down. He was on the phone with <laughs> the cops. Funny, I was sorry. like, are you serious? So I took do my phone out and started videoing problem? him. Let me just ask you a question. Why do you think he is now... Um, you know, uh, calling the police on you based on this. Because uh, he know he has done wrong to me. He know he has abused me. He knows it. He has done it and I took it, hide it, and hide it to keep his job. It's fucking I don't hurtful. Her. I don't believe him. I, don't I get blamed for something that I have not done. Just stay away. I'm the victim. No, I've been the victim. <sighs> oh my goodness. Okay. Mr. Brim. Yes, yes, Your Honor. She's still emotionally attached. That, that's what I see here. I don't know what happened between them. I don't know if he's the abusive one or she is, or neither or both. I really don't because I don't trust either one of them. But she is not over this because she's like, she's trying to goad him and she's talking about, she's, she's trying to say, oh, I have hickeys on me and, and I just touch you and you get too excited and all this stuff. It, it's, all, it's all about framing her as being the center of things. And the, this woman has to leave the house. It, but the, uh, it's, it's, it's very strange. Can I speak on? Let me ask you a question first of all. So yes. you... Do you have any questions for her? A specific question, not to argue with her. A question for Donna? A specific question. Okay, uh, my specific question. Your specific question? You put me on a restraining order asking on the 19th down New Jersey. Now, a question which starts with I I don't know how to answer. What what, what question? Uh, uh, you, You saying that um that you knocked on my door a question you was banged you bust my door down with a metal pipe 
after after you took okay, so that's not the hold on, Mr. Quay, Mr. Brown, watch. I'm gonna put that in a question. Why did you hit his door with a metal pipe? That's how you asked the question. Yeah. Why did you hit my door <laughs> with a metal pipe? And it was one something. One Can question. I finish? One okay, question. go ahead. Okay, I, I asked you that. I'm sorry, Jan. Okay. Ms. Brown, he wants to know why you hit his I door. Hit, I hit the door with a canopy, a, a side of a canopy, like an arm of the canopy, to get the door open. He would not open the door for the police. He didn't open the door for me. And I said, I'm going to make sure this door gets open today because I want to know what's going on in my house. It's not his house. It's ours. We shared together for the last two years. Oh, and sharing is caring. Okay. Um, when you when you say that you came there and you said one one something at night, one something at night, wouldn't you think at that time, like when and you never Okay, I'm not gonna cheat and because I haven't seen the rest of this, so I don't know what the result is. I don't believe either one of them, but so far she's admitted to um hitting the door with a, a metal object and grabbing him. A couple of times now, he, she's made allegations against him, which is which he denies, and she has no evidence of. So as a matter of evidence, I'm not saying I don't know what reality is, but as a matter of evidence, this isn't close. He's winning currently. But knock on my door. I thought someone was breaking in my home. You got to ask him That's how loud it was. Okay, I don't think, I know. You're not asking a question. Ms. Brown. Um, I got a, just a couple for you. So there was a TPO, and this is for Ms. Brown, not for you, Mr. Brown. This is Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown, there was a TPO filed in New Jersey. When was that filed and, and dismissed? I filed a TPO in New Jersey when I realized what he was doing. And I said, you know what? Because he don't want to get a divorce. And he told, threatened me over and over again about the divorce. And if you ever try it, that I will kill you in this neck because we're going to be together oh forever. God. And I said, no, we're not. So I went and got oh the TPO God. and I told them oh exactly God. what's been going on all this time. I have everything documented from that. So the lady said, when you go there, just go ahead with the police and have the TPO registered in Georgia. And I said, no problem. While I'm there, I will do that. <laughs> so I said, I'm coming with the police to always to protect myself. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of him oh. because of the crazy stuff that and he has done to me so far. Yes, Ms. Rutledge. Ms. Rutledge, is there a TPO against Mr. Brown out of New Jersey? They yes, they yesterday. just dismissed the um, TPO from Donna Brown against Edward Brown. Yesterday. They agreed Both to of them. dismiss the, the um, temporary protection order and they um, in New Jersey, where they both have attorneys because of the divorce, they decided they would resolve those issues in the divorce. And they both signed a document. I can provide it where they said they would not uh, come in contact with each other. And they dismissed the temporary protection order in New mm -hmm. Jersey. Okay. Both of them did it. So there was a, there was a mutual TPO against, or was it just against one of them? Both. So Ms. Rutland, it was mutual? Yes. Sir. Are you talking to me? I was asking Ms. Rutledge. I'm asking legal questions, obviously. I just um, to... so that was a mutual TPO. And what, Ms. Jersey. Brown, did he have a, a protection order against you? Yes. Okay, yes, so he did. Okay, so it was a mutual. Right. Yes. So they just dismissed it yesterday. Yes. yes. And they came up with a side agreement saying, we'll leave each other alone and let us handle this through the divorce. Right. Yes. Okay. Ms. Rutledge, you said you had... And I don't want to see his wee wee. You said you uh, had. To, and what was he saying when he was coming up to you? I mean, what is the video? What's the video? Without showing me his wee wee. <laughs> Are you talking to me, Your Honor? Because I can't. Brown, she said she had a video, but I don't want to see. Yeah, because I had I had video and everything. I have all the text messages, Your Honor, and you know, I'm. Ms. Brown, uh -huh. Hold on, I, I Brown. can't hear you. It's, it's it's a sound. I'm having a problem with the sound. Hey, I'm asking Miss Brown. Brown. I'm still talking. Okay, to I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah. You sorry. said you have a video without showing me his junk. Can you <laughs> can I see the video of whatever the exchange? At that night when he had his pants down short. Did you? Well, I don't see his wee wee. No, but... no, he had a shirt on and he was covering his his private part. Okay. Did you? Sit he in... was. 
he was on the phone. Have you sent it to Miss Rutledge so she can show it me via sharing oh. screen? I think I did. She has yes, it. I think so. Yeah. Okay. She have it. Can I see that? And please tell me it doesn't have something there I cannot unsee. Mm -hmm. She added it to her DPIC collection. I'm trying to um, make sure it's downloaded because I the one video I had <laughs> is from the injury. Yes. Come in. Okay. All right. I believe this. I'm gonna just put it inside the bag with the, a separate I, bag because so I gotta put this out for the carrier. Thank you. I don't yeah. know how she does this all day. And then she goes and gives bonds to felons at see. night. Oh, good lord. I thought I downloaded it. I'm sorry. Can you just forward it to me really quickly just because I'm, I'm having ready to, to, I'm getting ready to right now. That was when he was on the um, phone with the police and he had came, but I said, hold on. Uh, I'm sending it to you right now. One second, okay? I sent you two. Amazing. All right, let me share the screen. It's two of them, I said. I'm still waiting for them. I'll stop sharing the screen until. All right, I'm just gonna do a preemptive. <laughs> Let's just get out of the way. Do you know what day previous you just sent me this? Cause I had it pulled up, let me see. I got it right here. God, I hate this. Hey, what's up? Dick pussy, dick pussy, dick pussy, dick pussy. Going back and forth between texts with one another, and I never want to hear it again. <laughs> it's every day for her. It's every day. Just waiting for it to come through, Miss Rutledge. Yes, this, if, I don't know our, if the videos. Miss Brown, are you? Can she share her screen or no? She is on her phone, so I haven't received them yet. I'll be able to just turn my phone around so she can see it. Meanwhile, he's just we can he's just living a lot of time. <laughs> I like, know. Not the adventure if life he comes up, there. I'll definitely I'm let you know. Show them. Unzipped. He says, this, like, wait for the show. Ms. Brown, make sure you stop yeah, the video junk. if the judge asks you to stop it, okay? Yes, ma'am. Make sure you hold it to the camera because some people. I'm holding it to the camera, like really close to you. Okay. There you go. And then play it so I can hear it. I'm Shame, I love it. You want to go there with me? 
You go with me. You want to go there with me. I ain't trying to wait nothing. She did never touch me. I said stop. I said stop. So what you got? A little drip, drip, drip on your balls? Seriously, Eddie? I got a piece of ball at. Seriously? Yes, I do. Ball of it. All of it. All of it. Are you serious? You better come better than this. Can't turn on his ankle. Because if you think that you will get away with this compared to wet intrusion on my head, and I got pictures of it too, and I try to save, save your job, the little teeny, little teeny spots, then you go right there. Compared to my face, and what it look like when you got finished with it. All right. I got you. We'll see. When you go to Lansing, the fire department, and say you've been arrested, and that. Unfortunately, there were glimpses of something. Please like help me. What is the other video? Ms. Brown, what's the other video? The glimpses. Hold on one second. Please help me. It's just him, just a walk, just the, everything else was just pictures of him, of, of the whatever he said that it was wrong with him. The little one blood on his leg or whatever, and that was it. <laughs> okay. That's him with this. It, it's it's all it's all it's all covered. It's just this is where he went to, when he came to me with his pants down, and I just took a picture of it. Okay. He had his pants on because I was on my way out the house. His pants wasn't down during this the whole time until. He's showing me what he what he's what he's showing me. Did you grab him under um with his pants on? His, his pants was on. I was about to leave. I had my coat on and my pocketbook around me. So yes, he didn't have the coat on because he didn't put his coat on at all. But his but he was fully clothed with those fat pants on and, and the shirt. All right. Anything else, Miss Rutledge? No, I really didn't want to have to go and show all of this. I just wanted, you know, there is a criminal case. I just really did not want to have to go through all of this. But because I think, you know, he that my, you know, I can't. Can I actually do the video as well? The voice recordings of him threatening me? Yes. What's the date of the voice recording that he last threatened you? Oh my. 4 8 22, which was right around that, um, about like a, yeah, 4 8 22. And that was just the recent one because I left on June of 22. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, no way I go my way. Bitch, I am not playing with you. Hold on. Just go ahead. Go ahead. That's that, bitch. My authority. I don't, I don't disrespect you, okay. but you, you are disrespectful to me. You will respect and you don't me. Care. Waiting, so keep on. I don't deal no point with nobody. The 
Okay. This is all the same day. Every day. Okay. Now one day, you could top on this. Not one day at all, right? I'm not high. Let me find out something with you. I'm, 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 I'm telling you now. I'm finish your ass right now. Mm -hmm. Everything can be gone. I don't know. I don't know. Everything. It's fine. 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 And if that's the key point thinking, you want to drive your own stuff crazy. That's not my Okay. 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 I ain't got no fear in my mind. I ain't playing with you, bitch. Not at all. And you sitting here, go ahead, make all the phone calls you want. You're right, and we turn them off. Okay, sure. All right, anything else, Ms. Rutledge? Ms. Brown. No. On the uh, on the dates of the incident that he is stating, were you acting in self defense? Yes, ma'am. Do you know that man. you cannot go to his home? Yes, I do. Do you plan on contacting him or no. having any contact with this man? No, I don't want to. I don't ever want to. Do you feel that you are have been a victim of domestic violence? Absolutely. Have you been going to seek some type of counseling? Yes, I have therapy. When did you did, with all this happen? Had you been seeking counseling or you know with I have I have I have therapy that I go to every once a week. Okay. Because no. I have a hard time sleeping. It's just hard. It's really hard. It's hard dealing with this. There's someone that you trust. And you trust your life with, and you marry the one that's going to beat you to death and threaten you and go through this every single day. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Nothing further, Your Honor. Anything else from you, Mr. Brown? You have to take yourself off mute. Anything with this? Um, I have text messages. If you can read this. She say, I truly apologize, pinching your personal area. Eddie, I should I not did. have done that. I, I am holding. She is saying, I am holding. I'm, I'm letting you myself accountable. I say we will always admit when each of us are wrong. I'm doing so. I never grabbed yes, my wife. I, I let you talk. Yes, you this, is, this is what you text me. This is what you text me. I never, I never wrap my arms around this young lady. I was not drinking. And she texted me all this and holding full accountability through her text messages. And Ms. Rutledge, you can ask your client to send her the same texts that I have because you can't lie. This is all in your text messages. You told me you apologize at the day of Mr. rest. Brown, Mr. Brown, yes, ma'am. I just cannot I finish. Have, like no, I have absolutely no doubt she grabbed your baby. She said she did. <laughs> and she held full accountability, and I done nothing to her. It was not in no self defense. I did not grab this woman. This is the second everything that I stated from the nineteenth that she said, Your Honor. Till the day everything happened, it went right from the day she said this, the next day, the next day, everything that I already written down that she told me that she was going to do, that she was going to do, she carried that act out. I couldn't, I can't make this up. See, everything from the day I went to family division until the day she was arrested, she told me she was going to do that. I never, not once, grabbed this woman around her neck. Never. When she said she knocked on my door, 
You never knocked on my door. You banged my door in with a pipe. I got pictures of the pipe. I got the damages of my door. It's no way that you can knock and cause the damage of my property by knocking. Other thing, you saying I did something to you in 2021. I don't know. If, uh, you said I did something to you in 2021. Why do you ain't press charges on me then? All of this stuff is now because I was away from you. But you held you, me if, hostage. Okay. And how can I hold it's you? Hostage? you please you, stop uh, muting yourself. I'm not. I, am I muting myself, Your Honor? Miss Brown, that was a misbreak. Okay, here's okay, what I'm, I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. So, Your Honor, because she didn't let me finish. No, I, I can, I've heard. I've heard. Okay, no, I can never hold you hostage when you went to work every day. Argue with her, so don't argue with her. You're no, I'm not. I, I'm your honor. I'm not arguing. I'm just trying no, to. Just you're speak. talking to her. You're not talking to me. So. No, I am speaking. Well, okay, I'm sorry, your honor. I know you ain't your never honor. hostage because that'd be a sad day on your part. But Jay, excuse me, Brown. I said <laughs> I know you're not gonna hold me hostage because that'd be. A uh, sad no, day. I'm not. No, ma'am. I ought to be okay, your honor. I'm Brown, my point is, you were talking to her. Not me, because you said okay. I've never held you hostage. I said, you're right, you never have. Okay, right. so here we go. Ms. Rutledge, I'm going to give you leave of court to file on her behalf if you need. There's no counter. I'll give you leave of court to file on her behalf, and I'll put this in place, because right now, if you did a counterclaim, you're right. They need to stay the heck away from each other, both of them. So... I will give you leave of court if you want to. Because to you, me, you know, Your Honor, um, uh, Ms. Brown, did you uh, did you file so for a temporary protection order in Georgia? I tried to take the Jersey one and get it registered, but they didn't have the right paperwork to give me at the time. But I would like to, if I could, okay. absolutely. I that. I mean, I, I, I mean, Mr. Brown, you'll get it. I'm going to leave. Is that my agreement? Too, because <laughs> somehow you both agreed to dismiss the TPO against one another up in Jersey. Exactly. Now, there's a change in, but obviously there needs to be one in place because neither of you need to be. Your Honor. Right. Yes, Your Honor. Just speaking with you. I never did anything to her. Everything that she's, and I have everything in, in her text messages. Everything that she said she was going to do, she carried it out. I never done nothing to her. She could have done that a long time ago, Your Honor. I never did anything. I just want to protect. Dude, you're winning. Shut up. You're not listening. You have your... Because I, I, I can't hear you, Um, Your Honor. I, I'm Because you're going in and out. Put you don't shut your mouth. You have your TPO. Yes, I can't hear you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I just can't because you're going in and out. I'm not being rude. You were just going to in and out. Just leave it open to file that. You That's have it. one. You have a TPO. Yes, ma'am. Okay, there you go. Ms. Rutledge, I'm going to give you leave of court. Uh, Ms. Ms. Free will make a note of that to file on behalf of Ms. Brown. And how long do I have to file that? Whatever you'd like. Okay, we're going to file it. Um, we're going to file for a temporary protection order uh, by next week. So we, you know. Okay. All right. As long as everybody's emails in the chat, once you put them in there, we will send y'all copies of the orders. And Ms. Rutledge, if you want us to send it to you as opposed to Ms. Brown, let us know. But we'll make a note that I've given you leave of court since there wasn't a, since she hired you and there wasn't a counterclaim or anything filed. Mr. Brown, so that you'll know, I'm looking yes. at the bond conditions. There are. It says no further contact with Edward Blant, Edward Brown, no alcohols, no drugs, no weapons. Look, somebody put this ain't mine because it says no weapons and firearms. But anyway, so no no call, no drugs, no weapons, no further contact with Edward Brown, and that is in place. It was signed December twenty fourth. So the bond conditions are in place. I just read them. I'm going to give her leave of court. Once she place y'all's email in the chat, I'll get all leave the meeting. Thank y'all. Stay healthy and safe. Have a good week. Yeah, Anna, I wanted to Good ask. Day, I, want, I wanted to ask you a question, Anna. Yeah, Anna. Uh huh. Yeah, Anna. I'm listening. Yes. Um, why do I have a PTO against me? You don't. It's a TPO and you have one against her. Okay. Against you. I, I'm cause, cause you're going in and out, Your Honor. I'm not trying to be, you know, he doesn't know because you're okay. going in and out. Okay. I don't know why. Maybe because you're in a car. Ms. Relish, am I going in and out? Ms. Brown, I mean, usually Ms. Free tells me. So you don't have one. 
I'm giving Ms. Rutledge leave of court if she, if her client wants to file one. There's nothing against you right now. Right, but, but, and that's what so, I'm asking you. When I, what I was just asking you, Your Honor, if you can hear me, why would I have one against me? Everything she said, I documented it from A to Z. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, Judge Houston, Miss Reed, will hear that if it's fine. Okay. You don't have so one anyway. Against you. All right. Both. Oh yeah, Mr. Brown, place your email in the chat. If you, let me see, do we have it? Do we have it? So I can leave. I can leave now. Um, Miss. You can put your email in the chat. You cannot leave before you put your email in the chat, Mr. Brown. Okay, put your yeah, email I, in I the can't. chat. All right. Put your email. Okay, my email is the same one. E put it in the chat. No, nope, I don't want you. To Go ahead. Go ahead. Just type it in, in the chat. All right, hey, Miss Rutledge, can you speak to me with respect like I'm speaking to you? Mr. Everyone, Brown. everyone Mr. don't know Mr. how to Brown. do all this. <laughs> Look at Mr. Amber. Brown, you have someone in the Amber corner. Amber had the best IRL for that. Place it in the chat. I don't want to put your email out there on YouTube while I'm streaming. All right, well, I when I was playing, everybody know how to do this. How do you do this in the chat? I'm just trying to explain to them. Okay, every... she's, she's, whoever's with you, they said they're going to help you. You hit the little three dots. All right, thank you. Thank you so kindly. I'm going to see if, right. if that can happen. Thank you so kindly. Put your, put your emails in the chat. Y'all can both leave. Miss Rutledge, he wants to send it to you. You want us to send the order to you, Miss Rutledge? Yes. Okay. All right. And thank you all. Yes, I'll forward it to my client immediately. Yes, thank you, Judge. Okay. Y'all stay healthy and safe. Enjoy your three-day weekend. Oh, good Lord. That was that was just that was just awful. <laughs> the story, the pants around the ankles, the whole thing, the fact that it, we got halfway through the video and it went down. Thank God, somebody. Oh, and I don't even have it because I was going to use it another way. But uh, somebody somebody um, sent me that. I think on IG that clip out of Washington. That was crazy. And now I'm and now I'm going to hear from the pearl clutchers for the next uh, six months about how I was laughing during a serious hearing because and that's all your fault. I take no responsibility. That's the chat's fault, one hundred percent. Big thanks to Biggin. Biggin uh, had sent that to me, but it was downloading, and I, I just went because I know I know it's going to take a while. So uh, uh, I, I'm actually proud of that transition. I, I threw up the other video. And then, uh, then try to find it close. I, th I think we pretty much covered that whole hearing. What a deal! Oh, we've got Judge Manning saying, "I have no doubt that that you grabbed his wee wee." <laughs> we, we got a guy who I don't believe, but I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> I I I don't trust him. I think she's completely full of it. But I, 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 that doesn't mean that he's innocent. He, he's saying some, he's, he's pretty aggressive in his tone, but you're talking about a woman who just grabbed his jewels. I, frankly, I'd be worse. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's the truth. But she, she admitted this stuff. Then he, then we get to the end. And so, so he, he, she's trying to get rid of a TPO that he has against her. Uh, it, it stays in place, which means he w wins. He has no idea till the end. He does not know how to send his email and he does not know that he won. The judge is suggesting that, that she file a counter so that they can be, it can be a TPO against both of them. That's probably a fantastic idea, but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't conceptually understand that would require another hearing and all that other stuff, which which uh, Judge Manning suggested should be for another judge. <laughs> oh, that was that was out there. All right. Happy Friday. Stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. Use Uber if you're if you're out and about and having beverages. All right. Or something. You know, I'm not endorsing Uber here. I'm just saying, you know, don't drink and drive. How's that? Have a good weekend. Stay safe. Oh, yes. I think Biggin's starting a, a, a stream right now, and this should redirect to it. I just got that from him in the chat a few minutes ago, and I set that up. All right. I will see you all soon.